Hi Walter Rauschenbusch in Christianity and the Social Crisis, the last chapter, What to Do. This section is entitled, The Christian Conception of Life and Property. The spiritual force of Christianity should be turned against the materialism and mammonism of our industrial and social order. If a man sacrifices his human dignity and self-respect to increase his income, or stunts his intellectual growth and his human affections to swell his bank account, he is to that extent serving mammon and denying God. Likewise, if he uses up and injures the life of his fellow men to make money for himself, he serves mammon and denies God. But our industrial order does both. It makes property the end and man the means to produce it. Man is treated as a thing to produce more things. Men are hired as hands and not as men. They are paid only enough to maintain their working capacity and not enough to develop their manhood. When their working force is exhausted, they are flung aside without consideration of their human needs. Jesus asked, is not a man more than a sheep? Our industry says, no, it is careful of its livestock and machinery and careless of its human working force. It keeps its electrical engines immaculate in burnished cleanliness and lets its human dynamos sicken in dirt. In the 15th Assembly District in New York City, between 10th and 11th Avenues, 1,321 families in 1896 had three bathtubs between them. Our industrial establishments are institutions for the creation of dividends and not for the fostering of human life. In all our public life, the question of profit is put first. Pastor Stocker, in a speech on child and female labor in the German Reichstag, said, We have put the question the wrong way. We have asked, how much child and female labor does industry need in order to flourish, to pay dividends, and to sell goods abroad? Whereas we ought to have asked, how ought industry be organized in order to protect and foster the family, the human individual, and the Christian life? End of quote. That simple reversal of the question marks the difference between the Christian conception of life and property and the mammonistic. Life is more than food and raiment, more too than the apparatus which makes food and raiment. What is all the machinery of our industrial organization worth if it does not make human life healthful and happy? But it, is it doing that? Men are first of all men, folks, members of our human family. To view them first of all as labor force is civilized barbarism. It is the attitude of the exploiter. Yet unconsciously we have all been taught to take that attitude and talk of men as if they were horse powers or volts. Our commercialism has tainted our sense of fundamental human verities and values. We measure our national prosperity by pig iron and steel instead of by the welfare of the people. In city affairs the property owners have more influence than the family owners. For instance, the, the pall of coal smoke hanging over our industrial cities is injurious to the eyes. It predisposes to dis diseases of the respiratory organs. It depresses the joy of living. It multiplies the labor of housewives in cleaning and washing. But it continues because it would impose expense on business to install smoke consumers or pay skilled stokers. If an agitation is begun to abolish the smoke nuisance, the telling argument is not that it inflicts injury on the mass of human life, but that the smoke hurts business and that it really pays to consume the wasted carbon. In political life, one can constantly see the cause of human life pleading long and vain vainly for redress, like the widow before the unjust judge. Then suddenly comes the base voice of property, and all men stand with hat in hand. Property, by the way, here has a capital P. Our scientific political economy has long been an oracle of the false god. It has taught us to approach economic questions from the point of view of goods and not of man. It tells us how wealth is produced and divided and consumed by man, and not how man's life and development can best be fostered by material wealth. It is significant that the discussion of consumption of wealth has been most neglected in political economy. Yet that is humanly the most important of all. Theology must become Christocentric. Political economy must become anthropocentric. That is, man must be the center. Man is Christianized when he puts God before self. 
political economy will be Christianized when it puts man before wealth. Socialistic political economy does that. It is materialistic in its theory of human life and history, but it is humane in its aims, and to that extent is closer to Christianity than the orthodox science has been. It is the function of religion to teach the individual to value his soul more than his body and his moral integrity more than his income. In the same way, it is the function of religion to teach society to value human life more than property and to value property only insofar as it forms the material basis for the higher development of human life. When life and property are in apparent collision, life must take precedence. This is not only Christian, but prudent. When commercialism, in its headlong greed, deteriorates the mass of human life, it defeats its own covetousness by killing the goose that lays the golden egg. Humanity is that goose in more senses than one. It takes faith in the moral law to believe that this pennywise craft is really suicidal folly and to assert that wealth which uses up the people paves the way to beggary. Religious men have been cowed by the prevailing materialism and arrogant selfishness of our business world. They should have the courage of religious faith and assert that man liveth not by bread alone, but by doing the will of God, and that the life of a nation consisteth not in the abundance of things which it produces, but in the way men live, justly with one another and humbly with their God. The next section is entitled The Creation of Customs and Institutions. I'll put in a link to Martin Hengel, that great German theologian, on property, land, and equality in ancient Israel. See you soon.